What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. We're going to continue our teletherapy conversation because, well, that's just kind of the nature of the times, isn't it? And I know a lot of you all are still starting your private practice for the first time and others of you are ditching your brick and mortar office in order to offer teletherapy exclusively from your home. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your home teletherapy office so that you have all the tools you need and so that you're prepared for such mishaps as, you know, screaming children running around the house because such is life. So in today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to set up your home teletherapy office for success and, you know, avoid situations like your child showing up in the background of your therapy session. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. In order to set up your home teletherapy office, not only do you need the proper technology, but you also want to make sure the space itself is set up for teletherapy and you also want to make sure that you're comfortable because you're going to be sitting staring at a computer screen for a long time. So let's just run through all the items you need in order to set up your teletherapy office. First, of course, you need internet and you need good internet. Make sure that your internet is set up for success with both fast download and upload speeds. Now it's best to set up your office as close to your router as you possibly can, but whether you're close by or far away, I strongly suggest that you use an ethernet cable to hardwire into the internet. Even if you're sitting right next to the router, it makes a huge difference on your internet speed. I've also only recently discovered that even if you don't have an ethernet port in your computer, you can get an adapter and easily connect to the internet that way. Trust me, it makes a huge difference and you don't want to be the one responsible for a poor internet connection disrupting your session with a client. Next, you need a computer or device with a built-in camera or you can hardwire an external camera as well. Next, I suggest you use some type of earbud or Bluetooth that has both a speaker and a microphone affiliated. Even if you're just using the free headset that comes with your device, it has two major benefits. First, it drastically improves the sound quality because it cuts out echo, makes it easier for you to hear your client and for them to hear you. And also it makes it a lot easier for you as the therapist to focus on what your client's saying rather than any background noises like those screaming children and the barking dogs. There's always some. You can also use traditional headphones if that's what you feel most comfortable with, but I kind of like the earbud look because it's a little bit less obtrusive looking. Next, it's important to utilize every strategy you can to soundproof your space. Just having a door that closes usually isn't enough to keep sounds from going in and out. And just like how we do in our brick and mortar offices, it's really helpful to have a white noise machine sitting outside your office so that certainly others in your household can't hear what's going on. And it can also make it a little more difficult for you to hear what they're up to as well. I also always add insulation tape around the door frame and a door sweep at the bottom of the door. It's surprising how much sound just that little change can make. You might also be really surprised how much of a difference it makes to add various textiles to your office, like curtains, rugs, blankets, pillows, anything soft and fluffy can really make a big difference in keeping the sound from coming in or going out. Also, if you have any little ones running around your house, even if they're under close observation of another caregiver while you're seeing your clients, I strongly suggest that you put a lock on your door because all that soundproofing isn't gonna do anything for you if your child simply walks into your office. Oh, what a nightmare, but I'm sure your clients would understand. But let's just, let's just put the lock on the office. Now, whether you have little kids, barking dogs, loud construction outside, or any other type of loud noises going on in your environment, I really suggest that after you do all this soundproofing setup, you test it out by doing a test call with a friend and just seeing if they can hear anything that's going on in the background of your space. If they can still hear background noises at this point, then I do suggest you take whatever more involved measures are needed in order to minimize that noise, whether it be replacing your windows with double pane or making sure your children or dogs are at least two locked doors away from you so that the sound is further away. Next, you can focus on what aspects of your space your clients can see, which of course start with you. So I suggest you have a light pointed at you so your clients can see your face and your facial expressions clearly. You don't need to throw down a bunch of money on this, even if it's just a simple $30 ring light, that will do the trick, but you just wanna make sure that your clients can see your face. You also wanna make sure there's nothing distracting in the background and bonus points if the background can feel soothing or comforting in some way. I like to think of including things like plants or textiles that make things feel more homey, even though we're just meeting through a screen. It helps clients 
pockets feel more comfortable. But even if you don't do all that, just make sure your background isn't distracting. This might not be a good time to have like, you know, your bar cart hanging out in the background or like a life-size picture of your family on the wall. I mean, that's gonna be a bit distracting for your clients. And lastly, it's really important to consider your own physical safety and comfort in the space where you're gonna be sitting for hours, potentially meeting with your clients through a screen. So make sure your chair is super comfy and supports your posture, and also consider elevating your device or your computer so that the screen is closer to eye level. That's gonna really help out your posture. And now you have your home teletherapy office all set up, and all you need is the right software in order to make it happen. I have videos out already covering HIPAA secure video therapy platforms as well as how to access your client's signatures while working remotely. So I've linked to those below if you want to check them out. And if you're not so interested in jerry-rigging your own kind of DIY virtual therapy system, then fortunately therapynotes.com offers a comprehensive practice management system. Through their HIPAA secure client portal, you can schedule sessions, complete paperwork, and meet with your clients through their new telehealth beta platform. It's an all-in-one option and you can get access to try it all for free for two months with no commitment just by clicking the link in my description box. Thank you so much to Therapy Notes for sponsoring this video. Let me know in the comments what other aspects you make sure to include in your home teletherapy office. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. Keep it going, keep it going.